Hi everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Amanda Ostrander. I am a teacher turned homeschool mom and this is Raising A to Z, a place where we talk about all things homeschooling. And today I wanna to talk about how long it actually takes to homeschool your kids. So how long does it take to homeschool your kids? I get this question so often. Um, and I think the, there's a couple reasons for it. One, a lot of parents, when you come out of the school system, your first instinct is to recreate the school system at home, which means typically doing lessons from like 8.30 till 3 or 3.30 in the afternoon and filling the day, having a lunch break. I've even seen people who like pack lunches and have like recess time in their day and try to set it up exactly like the school system. And they get frustrated, they get burnt out, the kids are bored, they're overwhelmed, and it doesn't work. And so then they're feeling like, okay, well, how long does it actually take? Because I'm, I'm doing exactly what the school's doing, but it's, it's we're, we're exhausted, we're burning out, it isn't working, so how long does it take? And then I also see on the flip side, um, there is sometimes curriculum out there that I would say the expectations are too high. I have seen curriculum where like they're expecting a science lesson or a history lesson to be over an hour long in second grade. That's not realistic either. Um, so sometimes we have these things of like, okay, how long should this actually take? Sometimes for a variety of reasons, um, you just you just want to know like how long should I actually be doing this? How long is my homeschool day supposed to be? And then like what do I do during my homeschool day? So let's start with your homeschooling day is not going to be as long as a public school day. It's not. It's not going to be as long for a variety of reasons. Reason number one, homeschooling is significantly more concentrated. I can sit down with my kids and do a math lesson with Alexi and explain to her how to do fractions and how to, you know, take a circle and divide it into quarters and halves and thirds and her be like, oh, okay, good, we're done. And it can take me a couple of minutes because I'm working directly one-on-one. -on -one, it takes less time. If she gets in a five minute lesson, great, we move on. I don't then have to give her, you know, a whole bunch of like practice questions to see who gets it because I can just say, do you understand? Yes, show me. Okay, yes, you do understand, we're done. But in a school system, a teacher has to, you know, give out a whole bunch of practice questions, look around, say, okay, Johnny's not getting it, Sammy's not getting it, um, Crystal's not getting it, okay. And then come back and like explain it another time in a different way. Give out some more questions, see who's getting, okay, okay, Johnny's still not getting it, Crystal's getting it, Sammy's kind of there, okay, I'm gonna try explaining it a third time in a different, a third way. Maybe this time I'm going to pull in some manipulatives and we're going to try to do something like that. Okay. And try like, that's what a teacher is doing. They're trying to meet the needs of 30 children in the classroom and find ways to make it work for all of them rather than just focusing on one child at a time. Because obviously a teacher can't do that. It's just not realistic. But when you're homeschooling, you can do that, which means sometimes your lessons are going to be incredibly short <laughs> because your kid gets it the first time you say it. Like, for example... Alexi understood that when I say, when you see a P and an H together, it makes an F sound. She's like, oh, elephant. Yes, telephone. Yes. Okay, cool. Awesome. I didn't need to explain after that. Some kids will need you to show examples. Some kids are going to need you to do, you know, have extra lessons. Some kids don't. And so when you're dealing with kids in homeschooling situations, you're packing in like a one hour math lesson that they're getting in school is often concentrated down to like 5, 10, 15 minutes. So you're getting a lot more bang for your buck in that sense. The other thing that we need to think about is that homeschooling doesn't have time fillers. So like, let's go back and like, let's look at this like one hour math lesson, because that's typically what we're doing in elementary schools in Ontario. They have a one hour math block. And I'm saying we're whittling that down to like 15 minutes. What's happening in that math block? There's a lesson, there's activities. If you're finished, the, there's a lesson, there's some practice activities or questions. If you're done, you're doing reading or you're doing this like coloring page or you're working on this mini project 
which is not really for grades, but it's just really time filler so that the other kids who need to take longer can catch up. Then we're coming back. So there's always these like blocks of, of filler that are happening in the school system because not every kid is as fast as everyone else. And personally, I was the kid who was quite fast in school. I re- regularly remember reading one to two novels a week in like third and fourth grade because I was just faster than everybody else at getting different subjects done. So because we're taking that filler out, we're not doing those filler activities or there's filler or waiting for everybody else. As soon as Alexi's done her math, she's done. She can either move on to another subject or she's done for the, like, depending on what it is. Often math is the last subject we do, so she's done. But like, basically when she's done her math, she's not waiting for anybody. She's not filling her time to like get around to the next prop. Like she's just done. She can either move on to the next activity or do something different because, or another subject because she's done. Like there's no filler. So we're again, concentrating our time down. The other thing that you have to remember when we're talking about homeschooling and school systems and why it takes less time is we don't have a lot of the time. I don't want to say time wasters, But it's a lot of like the other things that happen in schools. So we don't have fire drills. You know, like I don't have to have three fire drills a year. I don't have to have three lockdown drills a year. I don't have to have an assembly every month to talk about who has character in my my home. That's like, I don't know if you've ever been to a character assembly, but man, are those boring. Um, that's, that's just filling time. That's doing all these things that yes, are good for a school community, but they're not necessary and they're not necessary in your homeschooling. So you can take all of those things out. You're not doing things like fundraising and announcements and checking agendas. Oh my gosh. I hated that. That was probably one of the things I hated the most about teaching was checking the agendas because it took so long. It took me half an hour to do. I had a class when I was teaching at a private school, I had a class of 13 kids. It took me half an hour to get through agendas because you had to check them, make sure the kids wrote down their homework in them, make sure that the parents signed them, make sure that you put any, they saw any notes that you put in there, check them for money, check them for permission forms. Like you don't have to do any of that. That's not taking up your school time because you've opted out of it. So these are things that also take away from like your kids concentrating on those things. We had like, when I was teaching, we were doing like, we had journaling. Journaling was not something that was done for grades. It was something to get the kids busy while we did things like announcements and agendas and, you know, getting the field trip forms and money figured out in the morning. Those are the things that you're taking out. So you don't have like that's half an hour. That's from 830 till nine right there. We didn't actually do anything, but that's technically in my language arts block. Like we're taking those things out. So again, we're shortening the amount of time that we'd be homeschooling. And then another huge time waster that you see in schools, and it's not like when I say time waster, they're not wasting time intentionally. Like it's just the reality of being in a school with, you know, a class of 25 or 30 kids and having different teachers and things like that. But another huge time waster that happens in schools are transitions. So transitioning from one classroom to another. I don't know if you've ever had to teach kindergartners to walk down a hall. <laughs> that can be a process. I remember spending my entire first week of school, sometimes my first two weeks of school, just working on how to walk down the hallway. Every, like that was a focus. And sometimes it took us 20 minutes to get from one class to another because they were too loud or they were stomping their feet or someone was talking or someone banged was banging on classroom doors and we'd have to start again because we have to like learn these systems. Transitions take time. Think about like, for example, like getting your lunchbox. I don't know when I was in, when I was teaching again at a private school, we had lunches. So every day at lunchtime, we had to take the kids out of our class, walk all the way down to the lunch, to the locker room get their lunch bags, walk all the way back upstairs quietly. Then they got their 25 minute lunch. Then they had to take all their lunch bags back down to their lockers. Then they put on their shoes. Then they went out for recess. Then they came back in. Then we had to all wait and line up when everyone had all of their outdoor stuff on. Then we went back up to the class and like just the transitioning alone from like coming up and down the stairs was sometimes it accounted for like 25 minutes a day in my house. 
I just throw a sandwich on the plate and the kids are eating within like five minutes. Like it, it, we're taking a lot of these like transitioning things out. Um, and you're not moving from classroom to classroom. I taught in a public school where we had this, I was teaching grade five, six class and they had a different teacher for almost every single subject. And oftentimes those teachers were in different classrooms. So every time they're like, Hey, so we finished language. So now we need to get our math books, which just getting the right books can take like 10 minutes in the classroom of 30 kids. They would get their books, they'd line up, we'd take them down to the math classroom where they would do math for an hour. And then we'd have to go and pick them up and bring them back. So like right there, that was almost 15 minutes of time just getting to and from a classroom. And then you'd have to get them, okay, now put your math books away. There's 10 minutes. Put your math books away and get this subject. Okay, that's that. Like that was another 10 minutes of putting the math books away and getting the next subject. Like you're not doing these things in homeschooling. We're not wasting these times with these transitions because we typically don't have as many transitions. In my home, my kids have their stack of workbooks and they finish one subject, they put it down, they finish the next subject, they move it aside, they finish one subject, they move it over. Like they're just, they just go through the stack and when the stack is done, it's done. Like they don't have to go necessarily get a whole bunch of things and and if they do, it's like down the, they're just going to their bedroom and back, they're back in two minutes. Like it's it doesn't take as long. So that being said, you have a lot of things that are happening in schools that mean you need six or seven hours to get through all the material because you have to account for transitions. You have to account for, you know, assemblies. You have to account for all like the bureaucracy and the administration stuff. You have to account for the needs of 30 kids. You have to account for all of these things and they take away from teaching time. When we're homeschooling, it is so much more concentrated because we don't have to deal with any of that. So, how long does homeschooling actually take? Generally, the rule of thumb is typically 20 to 30 minutes per grade, kindergarten being like a half grade. So for example, a fifth grader should be doing anywhere from 100 to 150 minutes of school seat work a day, which works out to about two and a half hours. Total, that's the whole thing. Um, a high schooler who's in 10th grade is going to be doing like 200 to 300 minutes, which is going to be anywhere from three and a half, which is about three and a half ish hours. Again, we're looking at that and being like, that is significantly less than a school day at like six and a half hours. So that's kind of like the rule of thumb. I personally find it, depending on your kids, it can be maybe a little low personally. Um, we are kind of averaging around an hour and a half with my first and third grader, which would kind of be a little bit more than, no, yeah, that's about third grade, but like even my first grader is, is doing quite fine with like an hour, hour and a half, even though that's a little bit on the, the high side for her. That's kind of like the general idea of what you're going for, but that also doesn't mean that's all at one sitting. So you can take breaks throughout that. You can have like a lunch, you can do a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the afternoon. You can take a little like transition break in the middle of the day, um, the middle of your workbook session. You can do different things that will kind of give you that little break. Um, and sometimes some kids, it's depending on the kids and whatever, you might be able to do a little bit more. And for example, in our household, we're kind of hitting on average between like an hour, hour and a half, um, even with my first grader. One of the key reasons for that is like, we do like, it's about 20 minute, 20 to 30, yeah, about 20 minutes, morning basket. And then we take like a 15 minute transition, little bit of a break where the kids get to go and get dressed and brush their teeth and kind of do something different. And then they come back and then we do another stretch of like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour where they're doing kind of a bit more in depth work. That counts. That's kind of our hour and a half. Like that's a lot and that's okay. But like I said, because we have that little break in there, it doesn't necessarily feel like they've been sitting there for an hour and a half. I don't recommend kids sit for more than like 45 minutes. No, like that's a lot for, for most kids. And I want to remind people that these are the guidelines for like seated activities. So we, your kids are doing other things during the day that are still learning, but they're not, maybe not necessarily seated. Like I do less schoolwork on days where my kids have extra classes because that is also taking up their mental load, 
right? So if my kids have on Wednesdays, they go to gymnastics, A, we have to do less because we don't have the time, but also like they're going and doing a full hour of like running, learning new things, trying new things, working with their coach, like that's learning too. So these are kind of the guidelines for seated activities. You know your kids, you gotta gauge it a little bit, but this gives you kind of like an idea of where to go and how much is expected, how much is too much. Yeah, and it's gonna change. Sometimes you're gonna have kids who can definitely handle doing more for a period of time and sometimes it's, it's too much and you gotta pull back. But like that at least gives you some guidelines, right? The other thing we need to think about is that you don't need to do school every day. In fact, I don't recommend it. When I'm doing um, consulting and helping and doing like working one-on-one -on -one with homeschoolers, you I don't recommend five days a week. For kindergartners, I recommend three days max. For kids over that, I recommend four days. It gives you, first off, it gives them a little bit more time to process because again, it's very concentrated. They need some time to like let their brain kind of stew th on things. Um, it also gives you as a parent and the kids some downtime during your week and a time to do other things. So whether that is like a day when you do co-ops or a day where you run errands or go to appointments, you can do those things without feeling like you're now behind and having to catch up because you don't have to catch up because you're doing, you're, you're so concentrated. Um, I used to say like we could afford to do two days or three days of homeschooling in kindergarten because one day of kindergarten homeschooling was the equivalent to two or three days of public school kindergarten by the time we concentrated it down and they were working on those skills. So it does obviously, once you get a little bit older, it's not quite as concentrated, but like you're still getting through typically just as much, if not more in that small block of time than a most kids are doing in an entire day. So that's why I always recommend doing kind of a four day week, giving yourself a swing day somewhere in there to do something, either something different, have some downtime, to reset your house or to run errands and appointments. It gives you a day to not feel like you're falling behind because you've already scheduled outside of that time. Then the last question I get when I talk about this is like, so if my kid's only doing school for an hour and a half a morning, what do I do with the rest of my day? Anything you want. Simple as that. Um, I always recommend that kids need lots of free time. They need time to play, they need time to explore, they need time to create, and they need time to process. Kids need time to have what they learned in the morning stew in their brains. They need time to play and have what they learned come out in their play and process what they learned through play. They need that. Um, you also have time to do other things, whether it is to go and socialize and join a co-op or take some classes that are somewhere else, you know, gymnastics or girl guides, art classes, rock climbing classes, like do other things. You have time to do those things. You have time to do focus on life skills. Like we do chores every single day. As soon as my kids are done school, they have chores and we've been working really hard on giving them chores that are, you know, A, age appropriate, but B, kind of like up in the ante a little bit. This, especially this year, we've kind of given some bigger jobs. Alexi's doing vacuuming. She's eight years old. You know, they can do life skills. They can learn to bake. They can learn to cook. They can learn to do some cleaning, which is so, so helpful. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, they can learn to garden. They can take the dog for a walk. They, like there's all these other things that you can do with your time, but then you also can just like hang out and like, watch a movie or like read a book together, play a game. Like you also can give them time to do things that maybe you wouldn't think of. We are big in like letting our kids kind of do like exploration and creativity stuff. And so like my kids are often like creating things. Right now, Alexia is super into using her iPad to make movies. So she'll recreate scenes out of a book or a TV show um, with characters that she has with her iPad or she'll like write a story or a script and then they'll like act it out. They'll like find music and like do all these different things to like make make it, make it a movie or put on a show or do those things. And it's great because they wouldn't necessarily have time to do that if they were in school. And that's one of the reasons why we love homeschooling. We are allowing our kids to follow their interests, to learn cool things in different ways and to show us their learning in different ways. I wish I had it, but Alexi did a couple of days ago she came to me and she goes, I want to show you the, the movie I made. And it was essentially a book report. And she had like a whole selection of books she's read. And she like was basically, she had made commercials 
for all the books that she had read in the past week or something like that. And I was like, this is awesome. I but I made the mistake of laughing. This is my, this is my bad. I made the mistake of laughing out of shock and awe. It was just because she said something really funny. She was like, and how does the book end? Well, I'm not going to tell you because you have to read it for yourself. And I wasn't expecting it. And I burst out laughing. And then I guess she got offended. And I didn't realize it, but she deleted it, unfortunately. But I'm hoping she'll make it again because it was so good. And I was like, that night I was like, you got to show dad. And she was like, I deleted it already. Anyway, but you got to give your kids this, this opportunity to learn, to create and to like show what they know in we weird ways. And when you're homeschooling and you're only spending an hour doing seat work or, an hour, or two hours doing seat work, you have lots of time to do these other things, to hang out with friends, to take classes, to be creative. And that's a great thing. And that's why we love homeschooling. So I hope this was helpful. Like I said earlier, I do offer consulting. If you have more questions, I will put a link for that down below. If you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, that's down below. I also am available on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok where you can see I give tips and tricks all the time. And you can also become a YouTube member where you get all kinds of bonus content, videos, coupons, um, stuff just for you, early releases, like all kinds of cool stuff. So definitely check that out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.